Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Stuart Baines. Uh, I'm pleased to tonight uh, provide a, a talk on dolphins, porpoise, and migrating minke whales as part of the Flamborough Migration Week. Uh, I'm pleased that uh, you've been able to join us, and the sort of general uh, track of the meet of the talk will be to initially tell you a little bit about myself uh, and what I do within the Sea Watch Foundation and in partnership with the Yorkshire Wildlife Trust. Then we're gonna run through a number of the uh, firstly more common uh, cetacean species that you will see off the Yorkshire coast uh, or potentially see off the Yorkshire coast. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about um, minke whales and the migration into the North Sea uh, in the summer and autumn of each year. And then we're going to look a little bit again at um, uh, the more unusual species that you uh, might uh, come across uh, occasionally in the North Sea. So first of all, as I said, my name is Stuart Baines. I'm an area coordinator for the Sea Watch Foundation. Uh, that's for Yorkshire, that's from the Humber up to the Tees. But primarily, I'm a citizen scientist. I'm not scientifically qualified, I've just been a, a lifelong uh, wildlife enthusiast, bird watcher, and in the last 15 years or so, coming to uh, uh, have a great interest in the cetaceans that we uh, find off the Yorkshire coast. Uh, I'm also an, an administrator of a Facebook page called Scarborough Porpoise, uh, on which um, I put information on the cetaceans and other items. Uh, so just to tell you a little bit about the Sea Watch Foundation and what they do, and what I do on their behalf. Uh, they're a national charity uh, improving the conservation of whales, dolphins and porpoise in British and Irish waters. We monitor the numbers and locations of cetaceans around the UK uh, and the issues that they might face. Uh, we do this by having a, a nationwide network of observers who are sending information to Sea uh, Watch, uh, and so we can uh, take a take a keep a track of the numbers and movement of the cetaceans around the UK. Uh, this involves a public and scientific monitoring. So, if you yourself are uh, have the opportunity to go visit the coast and you see any um, whales, dolphins, porpoises, please report the sightings to Sea Watch, which you can do um, over the internet or telephone or email. Uh, so what the, the principal element of what we're doing is, and, and the reason for doing this is to raise awareness and understanding of marine animals and the threats they face. So, and educate the public and make them aware of the fantastic wild animals that we've got living around our coast. Just tell you a little bit, a bit about this, what the Scarborough Porpoise, it's a Facebook page I started uh, about seven years ago now, I think it is. I just thought initially a few people might be interested to know what about the cetaceans and the marine wildlife we have around Yorkshire and Scarborough area where I live. Uh, and uh, it's been an amazing success, uh, I'll say it myself. It's uh, reached an excess of 54,000 followers now, which has certainly in the Scarborough area increased the number of people who are looking for cetaceans in, uh, considerably. Uh, when I first started, you'd get the occasional wildlife enthusiast walking around the marine drive or thereabouts looking for um, uh, anything they might see, it, right? see seals, porpoise, whatever. You see a lot more people now with binoculars, which I'm very pleased about. I'm also involved uh, as, as, as part of a partnership with the Sea Watch Foundation with the Yorkshire Wildlife Trust, and we have commenced uh, a few years ago. North Sea Cetacean Recording Group, uh, which has been a great uh, success. Um, Bex Lineman at the um, Yorkshire Wildlife Trust has uh, coordinated the um, and arranged and organised the um, the project, and we've uh, attained a considerable number, in excess of forty uh, new observers down the coast who observe from land-based uh, observation points. We also uh, carry out boat surveys in, a, in, in an effort to gather data on the cetaceans around so we can use it hopefully in the future to conserve them and protect them. 
just in case you're wondering uh, what the cetaceans word mean, it means it includes, it's a group name for whales, dolphins, and porpoise. So um, that's basically what it is, and it will be referred to throughout the talk. Just to run through a few of the uh, more common cetacean species we get here, the, beam, the most common cetacean off the uh, Yorkshire coast is undoubtedly the harbour porpoise. The year round, year round in the area, uh, and can be seen uh, off most of the headlands, so Flamborough Head, Valley Brig, uh, Scarborough Marine Drive, Burnston Long Nab, up and down the coast. Uh, the, the fairly healthy population, which uh, over the last 14, 15 years that I've been looking, has been fairly uh, static. We, in, in particular, the Scarborough area, uh, they are all round visitors, but we get more in the winter. And which is slightly off trend to all the areas, more in the winter than we do in the summer. Um, I think possibly it's because of there being less, less food, i.e., fish around, so perhaps they concentrate in areas where there is more chance of finding that. A little bit of information about porpoise. So they're 1.5 to 1.9 meters long uh, as an adult, uh, so about six foot money in old money, six foot long in old money. Uh, the small triangular fin, they lack, they lack a beak and like a bottlenose dolphin, and they're quite shy animals, so they don't approach boats. Now they don't, or oh, very rare beach, valley bridge, unless uh, it's uh, mating behaviour, which tends to take place in the autumn. Uh, and the uh, you often see a mum, so females have a calf every every July time or thereabouts, and the calf stays with the uh, mother for 12 months and she has uh, uh, usually another calf the following year. So you often find a calf tucked in, in tight uh, by its mum, particularly in the summer. And then as the winter goes on, the calf becomes uh, less dependent on the mother. So this is a typical uh, view here of um, mum and calf. Uh, that, that's what you would normally see, uh, certainly uh, in the early days of the curl's life in, in, in the summer and even now. But by, by about um, Christmas time, a little after, the, the calf is growing because more, more independent. So they spend less time sort of very close together and uh, the calf becomes a little more adventurous moving away. This is a picture of three porpoise here. Uh, you can see the small triangular fin quite well. Um, the, it's slightly unusual to get three, but what I think it normally is, is the, the, the adult female, the calf, and possibly last year's uh, calf hang, still hanging around as a juvenile, not fully independent of its mum. Do they mate, do your porpoise mate in Yorkshire waters? They certainly do. <laughs> this is uh, a rather... Um, uh, eye-opening uh, photograph of photograph, a couple of photographs of porpoise mating and almost becoming um, looking a bit like dolphins really, which is uh, but uh, certainly the uh, porpoises uh, seem to uh, uh, get breed mainly in the, the as I say November time or early December that sort of thing. Moving on to bottlenose dolphins, uh, these are say about fourteen meters four meters long, up to 12, 13 foot long. Uh, much bigger animal than the porpoise, twice the size of a porpoise. Uh, they have a robust head with a distinct beak uh, and sometimes a white tip on the lower jaw. A much diff a, a very different fin, tall, sickle shaped as opposed to small and triangular. Uh, they are uh, dark brown or gunmetal gray uh, as adults. When they're young, they are a light grey, calves are light grey, and then um, they get darker as they get older. They all have uh, a white uh, belly, which they maintain. Here's a photograph that uh, most of the photographs on here are ones that I've taken. There are two or three which are people kindly given for me to use on their behalf. But this shows uh, one of the bottlenose dolphins. Uh, uh, in the North Bay Scarborough, this was taken about three years ago, I think this one. And uh, as you can see, they are uh, the sort of animal which attracts a lot of attention. So we've had a lot more interest in 
citations off Yorkshire since the bottlenose dolphins have uh, appeared in numbers. Uh, and this is the reason why these sort of uh, occasional gymnastics that they show off. As you can see from this photograph, they do go into the uh, bays of Scarborough, North and South Bay. This is the North Bay with the chalets. Um, not as often as they um, sort of more often come across the north, outer North Bay to the area off the Marine Drive and then out to South Bay. Occasionally, uh, when there's plenty of fish around mackerel or salmon and sea trout, which is their main food, uh, they will come to the inner bays when you get the opportunity occasionally to get a photograph like this. Just thought I'd put this one in. This is my favourite shot. It's not the not the breaching bottle of Zofi, but I think it's a super, I, I like it. It's, it's nice artistic and just a very pleasing shot. So I thought uh, you might well enjoy that one. So I'll just tell you a little bit about the bottle of Zofi because they, are, they have been a very exciting addition to the North Sea cetacean population over the last few years. A few figures here. Because in 2018 and previous years, we had three to four sightings of bottlenose dolphins a year. Uh, so a sighting I would consider is a venture down of tracking of, of dolphins up or down the coast. So uh, we had four tracks, tracking events in 2018. And we'd had that similar level for many years. If I saw bottlenose dolphins once in a year, I was very pleased with that. Suddenly in 2019, we had uh, nearly 50, 47 um, sightings occurred. Uh, 2020, as you can see, it went up to 102. And last year, we had 221 in total. Uh, this year, again, are good numbers. We haven't got all the figures in yet, but it's on a similar par to 2021. So, uh, there's been a big movement. But basically, what, what seems to be the case is that the bottlenose dolphins that we get were originally species that mainly resided in the Murray Firth up near Inverness in northeast Scotland. And over the last 30 years, they have gradually spread down the east coast of Britain. Uh, they got, and until 2018, there were regular sightings as far south as the Tees, and frustrating for, frustratingly for cetacean watchers in. Yorkshire, very few site, very few movements further south. And then, as I say, over the last three or four years, they've suddenly discovered Yorkshire and they've been coming down regularly. Um, records mainly are down as far as uh, the Humber. Uh, there have been one or two sightings off uh, North Norfolk. Uh, now, whether that's because the, there aren't the observers in North Norfolk, but, and, but the dolphins are there, or that there is some uh, sort of line in the sand uh, near the Humber that the dolphins aren't necessarily crossing over. Uh, we don't know at the moment, but time will tell. Whether that, whether that uh, expansion of their um, habitat in, continues. So why are the bottlenose dolphins coming? This is why. It's all about food. So um, the bottlenose dolphins, um, um, food is generally uh, uh, salmon or sea trout. Uh, salmon and sea trout, as you're probably aware, uh, migrates up the east coast of Britain every year. And as it goes further up the coast, it goes into, uh, into the um, Tyne, the Tees, the Tweed, further up the Tay, further up in Scotland, Merrifirth, etc., to spawn. And um, it's almost as if potentially the bottlenose dolphins are tracking the fish that are coming up the coast. So they're coming down the coast and taking them as they come down the coast. So uh, that may be the reason why, and they are certainly finding fish here, seen them many times catch fish. So uh, that's, that's a good sign. Uh, tracking the dolphins. We have uh, an excellent arrangement with uh, a group called Citizen Finn who are based up in uh, Aberdeen and St Andrews University uh, in Scotland. They have, uh, they maintain a catalogue of over 250 bottlenose dolphins because bottlenose dolphins are quite boisterous animals and many of them have marks or notches on their fins. So the animals can therefore be tracked down the coast by uh, photographic record. 
So um, we, I have been sending in uh, photographs, uh, whatever photographs I've taken of the bottlenose dolphins to them, uh, and they can uh, inform us. They, they, they can inform us of who the dolphins are, uh, names and numbers, etc. Uh, and also they can track them, which means that in in time, hopefully. The conservation for bottlenose dolphins, which is in place in northeast Scotland, will be uh, potentially expanded down into this area at some future date because this is where now the dolphins are spending their time. They're not wholly up in northeast Scotland, they're going all the way down to uh, uh, Yorkshire. So uh, if you are out and about and you see any bottlenose dolphins and you manage to get any photographs, please think about uh, visiting the Citizen Fins website where you can easily upload your photographs to them uh, and they can therefore keep a track of where the individuals are. Um, you'll note here the one on the left, upper left, with a white marking, that's a famous, very well-known dolphin uh, on the northeast coast, that's called Runny Paint. Uh, that old girl is about uh, four, circa 45 years old, uh, so um, that's the lifespan of a dolphin is at least that, and she was uh, one of the first ones that was uh, photographically ID'd up in Scotland, so she's in excess of 45 years old, but nobody knows exactly how long, I don't think. Uh, do they interact with boats? Yes, they do. They appear to enjoy interacting with boats. Um, there was, however, initially uh, some uh, issues with this in that some of the, certainly out Scarborough, some of the boats were going out and, and aiming for groups of dolphins uh, at speed. Uh, but um, the RSPCA and other bodies got involved or created a, a, a program called Operation Seabird. And um, that has the aim of protecting not only cetaceans, but seals and seabirds at Benton. Uh, and that has been successful. And just in the last year, there's been a successful uh, prosecution of a boat that uh, was uh, came out of Scarborough Harbour and uh, uh, was a threat to the dolphins. Uh, so that was a successful conviction in that case, uh, which hopefully will deter uh, boat users from acting in an inappropriate manner. Is the arrival of bottlenose dolphins good news for all? No, it isn't, um, or, or um, probably not, certainly. Uh, certainly the harbour porpoise are uh, in danger from bottlenose dolphins. Uh, bottlenose dolphins have a reputation for being friendly animals, but they are wild, large predators. Um, an adult bottlenose dolphin can weigh upwards of half a ton. Uh, and they have been known to kill harbour porpoise, certainly in Northumberland and in Cardigan Bay and Wells, where there's also a healthy, healthy population of bottlenose dolphins. They unfortunately, uh, they don't eat them, but they they attack them, ram into them, fly, fling them about and kill them. Uh, we haven't had any um, um, potential, haven't had any uh, fatalities in, or attacks as far as we know it, off Yorkshire yet, but with the number of bottle of dolphins we're getting then, uh, that could be an issue in the future. So at the moment, the, for, sensibly, the, the porpoise tend to uh, make themselves scarce when there are bottle of dolphins around. The other animal which is potentially affected by the bottlenose dolphins is our other uh, visiting uh, dolphin, which is the white beak dolphin, the animal on the right, uh, that um, they um, used possibly to be more regular here than bottlenose when we didn't have many, many bottlenose dolphin sightings. So three or four sightings a year, probably an equivalent amount of uh, white beak dolphin sightings. However, they have dropped off and that's, that's the trend that is also um, visible off Northumberland as well, where they have had bottlenose dolphins for quite a few more years than we've had them. They also have noticed an, uh, that the white beak dolphin have not been as uh, commonly seen. And it might be that they have a mind on the bottlenose and are cautious about moving to the area when the bottlenose dolphins are around. Is the expansion of bottlenose dolphins across Yorkshire a short-term effect? No, I don't think it is. And the reason it isn't is because there are cars being born. These were all photographs of uh, bottlenose dolphins and the lighter-coloured calves taken off Scarborough in the last month. 
Uh, and if calves have been born and introduced to this area, then why won't the bottlenose and dolphins continue to use uh, our seas? I don't think there's a reason why they won't. I think it should be a permanent um, addition to our marine ecology, having these animals around. Moving on to minke whale. So minke whale is uh, the smallest baleen whale uh, in our, that we see. Baleen basically means that they have baleen that hangs down inside their mouths like a sieve. And when they feed by swallowing up large amounts of water and strain the water out through the baleen, which is the same similar, similar material as fingernails, fingernails are made of, hanging down, sieve, sieve the water out, eat the fish that's left. So the average the adults lead, uh, grow up to about 10 metres long, eight, up to eight tonnes in weight, huge animals. Um, it's a sleek animal with a sharply pointed head and a prominent dorsal fin. They're usually black or dark steel, uh, grey in colour, uh, and what the diagnostic feature, apart from the uh, head, uh, is the fact that they have what they call a white patch or mitten on their petrol fins, as you'll see in the, in the photographs to follow. But clearly, you've got to be fairly close to a minke whale to see the uh, petrol fins. So this is a picture I've taken of a minke whale off uh, the Whitby area, uh, this was taken a few years ago, but they are commonly in the area. Uh, and uh, on a day like that, which is not that common to get the seas as common as that, then you can see them uh, from land very easily as well as boats. Um, on more than one occasion, several occasions, I have uh, sat in on a bench at Whitby and looked out and seen the Mickey Wells at sea. Um, possibly by naked eye, certainly with a pair of binoculars that you can see them readily, uh, feeding off Whitby and stays. Picture here of a minky blow. Um, there's always a, a amount of discussion about minky blows. Do they, do they give a visible blow or don't they? Uh, I think it depends on the individual whale and the conditions. Uh, if it's calm, then you sometimes don't see a blow. Uh, but then when it's choppy, a bit like this picture here, Water's running over the wave the, the, and draining off the whale as it surfaces, and you get more visible blow. And I think some individuals, it's just the shape of their uh, blowholes that uh, creates a blow with where it isn't with others. But it's certainly, it's not unknown to see a, a blow from a minky whale. Uh, and it's not, not entirely pleasant to be too close to one when it does blow, because the uh, breath is extremely pungent and smells like cabbage. So it's not, I have on a number of occasions been out, uh, smelt it, I mean, I've even been out on a boat, smelt the whale blow, not never seen the whale, but you could just tell immediately it was minky whale blow. There's a nice picture here of a minky whale approaching the boat. Minky whales uh, swim in a similar way to four points in as much as they will uh, surface three or four times in a row and then uh, building up oxygen in their system, and then dive for a deeper dive, and then come up and do the same thing again. So here we are, a photograph of a minky whale uh, by, by a boat I was on several years ago, and you can clearly see uh, the uh, blowholes, twin blowholes as it comes up to breathe. And this shot, you can see the uh, wet, white mittens I was talking about, or marks on the pectoral fins, which are clearly obvious if and when you get this close to one. Uh, the, the trend is that the adult minke whales basically ignore boat traffic. They just carry on feeding, but you'll often get a juvenile, uh, this guy, who will come up and just take a look at uh, the boat. And you go, still look at him as well. Here we go. Here's another juvenile one coming up, giving us the eyeball as we were in our boat, and you can just see the white mitten on the right-hand side. Just gives you a bit of scale, this. Uh, a, a minky whale uh, next to um, a yacht off Whitby. So I'm going to a bit about whale migration. Not that we know an awful lot about it, but I can tell you some reasons as to why and where they might come from. So why do they migrate to the North Sea? 
they come for food, as with most animals and most cetaceans. Life is about food, and where is it? So they will come into the North Sea, and they will, uh, at the period between middle of August and early October, they will target the area of Stays and Whitby. Before that, they tend to arrive and be seen all the way from uh, further north of the Tees and the time down to Flamborough. Uh, I think they come and the, there's no concentrations of fish. So they're moving up and down, looking for it, picking up mackerel or herring, sand eel. And then as the spawning starts to occur for the herring, the sightings further down the coast seem to uh, reduce and the numbers build off, build up off uh, in that small area between uh, Whitby and Stays. Uh, through the Yorkshire Coast Cetacean, uh, to our North Sea Cetacean Group uh, observers recent this year, we've had some excellent counts in perfectly calm weather, perfect calm weather in early September. And um, uh, we've had, we've had uh, records of uh, 50 towards 100 minke whales seen over, say, an hour and a half, two hours time. So uh, although there's been no doubt considerable duplication in the whales seen in that time, uh, it there still shows a healthy population uh, of minke whales coming into the area, which is good news. Where do they come from? Well, it's difficult to say exactly. Uh, there were two opinions that, or it could be a combination of both, that some come from the North Atlantic, around the top of Britain, uh, and others are already out in the north, middle of the North Sea, and North North Sea, around Scandinavia, and they come down into the north, low North Sea to feed. Um, this next slide um, from the Sea Watch Foundation, uh, and a friend of mine um, who produced it, shows uh, the, a bit of the migration pattern. Uh, the uh, orangey yellow colours are the higher numbers of uh, minke whales. So as you can see, uh, from January, there is a uh, low number of sightings up north of, north of Britain, and then gradually May, June, and then particularly July, August, September, high numbers are seen around northwest Britain, of Scotland, northwest Scotland, over the north Scotland, down northeast, around the east coast of Scotland, and down to Yorkshire as well. Uh, so that that's that general pattern, but we don't know precisely where they're coming from. Uh, we think they possibly breed in the north, further out in the North Atlantic in the winter of their calves. You certainly don't see many young calves uh, in um, the North Sea uh, when they come to our area in the late summer. Uh, you see juveniles, but you don't see many young calves with their mothers. Uh, that's principally, we believe, because they give birth in the winter time. Uh, next up is the white beak dolphin. The white beak dolphin is our other uh, visiting dolphin, which we have dis dis discussed briefly before when we were talking about uh, the impact of bottlenose dolphins. As you can see uh, from the description, it's a more robust animal. It doesn't have a, a beak. It looks a bit more like a, a porpoise type head than a bottlenose dolphin head. They grow up slightly smaller than bottlenose dolphins, up to about 3.1 meters long. Uh, they have a, a very sickle shaped fin and they have a white mark on the flanks, uh, which at distance people have been known to confuse for orca. Uh, you'll see from the picture uh, the white markings uh, to the rear of the dorsal fin and on the flank, which uh, to the um, Untrained eye can perhaps appear to be um, orca rather than uh, dolphin. This is a photograph I took off Whitby a few years ago. A nice in that group to see calves as well as adults. Uh, and do dolphins have fun breaching? Yeah, I think they do. I think they do. I think it's communication as well. It might be sexual, but they also I think they just enjoy doing it. It's always great to see. White beak dolphin here. This is a um, this was by rounding a boat I was on off Whitby several years ago uh, when I was out with Whitby whale watching. And again, this is the same uh, voyage. 
And you can see the adult female um, white beak dolphin with her calf alongside. Note the lack of uh, beak compared to a bottlenose dolphin and very much the white markings. So what do we see in any other species of dolphin off Yorkshire? Uh, we do occasionally. We get a, there's a number of dolphins and whale species that have visited Yorkshire. Uh, some outcomes good, some outcomes not so good. Um, humpback whales are usually uh, successful in visiting and not uh, ending up beached on our beaches. Um, so the humpback whale's up to 15 metres long. Uh, sorry, up to um, yeah, 15 metres long, uh, 30 plus uh, foot long. Uh, they have fleshy tubicles on the top of their uh, head and uh, the, on, near the tip of the lower jaw. Uh, it's also, the fins are variable in size and variable in shape, but they tend to be more blunt, less um, pointed than uh, fins you'd find on a bottlenose dolphin or white beak dolphin. Um, we'll have to look at some photos. So this is uh, a shot taken by a friend of mine, Paul Smith. I was on the boat with Paul, this was in 2014 off Whitby. Uh, we had a breaching humpback whale. Now, unfortunately, the, hum breach, the whale only breached the once. Paul got a photograph. Uh, the, the whale was inquisitive and hang, hung around the boat for uh, uh, quite some time after that, but didn't breach again. But at least somebody got a photograph of a breaching um, whale off uh, Whitby. There have been other sightings uh, uh, occasionally. There was uh, one off Flam, photograph of Flamber uh, breaching uh, last year, I think it was. Nothing this year so far. But there's on average, and I mean, stop is just on average. There's no uh, predictability about it, but it does seem to be quite often a, a sighting of humpbacks off Yorkshire most years at some point, somewhere. Here again is the one we've just seen breaching. It's now swimming, and you can see the dorsal fin is um, a bit, well, it's, they vary in each case, but they're not particular, particularly obvious. And here it was, it was, it was just, it blew right next to the boat. It came up, you can see that with a, with a humpback whale, they have a, a very white pectoral fin, so you can see it under the water. And it just came up and uh, right within, within 20 yards of the boat. It was an exciting day. Uh, with humpback whales, a lot of them are identified by uh, the patterning on the tail fluke, because they all have an individual patterning. Uh, now, sadly, the one that was off Whitby that day, I've just been talking about, uh, didn't at no time showed its fluke. Uh, but this one, which I photographed not, not around the UK, but near Iceland, uh, you can quite clearly see the patterning on the underside of the fluke, which uh, and there is a photographic library, worldwide library kept, uh, which from which they are compared and sometimes tracked. Uh, this is another photograph I took off uh, Iceland. Few years ago, and I can see, you can see the tubicles on the front of the head. These uh, are uh, hair tubicles, uh, and they also they, they believe help uh, with the motion to the water of the humpback whales. That's the belief, as far as I'm aware. Fin whales, uh, as you may have heard, we did have a fin whale uh, sighting fairly recently uh, in June, and we've had, it's a second fin whale sighting off Yorkshire. Uh, this year. Um, uh, they are occasional visitors to the water. They are very large animals. You can see, much more 22 metres. They are the second biggest cetacean to the blue whale. And uh, they visit the Yorkshire coast on the whole similar time to the minke whales when there's plenty of food here, uh, or herring or mackerel, this type of food, sprat. Uh, they are Similar to a minke, but much bigger in size. Um, brownish, greater black on the uh, back and size on the top, white underneath. They have a diagnostic uh, left lower lip is uh, uh, much lighter coloured or white, uh, but you've got to be pretty close to a fin whale to identify it by the uh, uh, lower lip. Uh, there was one that visited um, 
the one of the whale watching boats off Whitby, I think that was circa nine, uh, circa 2015. And uh, that actually very conveniently swam around the boat several times so closely you could actually see the lower jaw. Um, that was exceptional. Uh, here we are, the fin well, which again, it's, until you see them uh, in context, it's difficult to appreciate it's like a really large animal. And here you can see the uh, white lower jaw on the animal, which I was talking about earlier. Another animal, which we get another cetacean, another baleen whale, like the fin whale and the mink whale, is the psi whale. Psi or psi whale. Uh, they are slightly smaller than fin whales, uh, but apart from that, very similar. They don't have the white lower jaw. They do have a different styling of uh, dorsal fin, which is more swept back than a fin whale. Here's a side whale. Sperm whales, we get sperm whales mm, probably annually at some point uh, or thereabouts in the North Sea. Uh, sadly, it's usually not, not a good outcome for sperm whales. Uh, they are a deep diving whale that eats uh, squid and needs deep water to, to navigate by. Uh, they winter off, uh, males winter off Scandinavia and northern Norway, and the majority uh, move down to their breeding grounds off the Azores in the winter by way of the west coast of Britain, west coast of Ireland. Um, some unfortunately come down the wrong side of Britain into the North Sea, and the further down they get, the worse the likely outcome is because they're not finding the food they need. Uh, whales like whales, uh, dolphins um, get their fresh water, the water from the food they eat. So if they don't get food, they don't have any water. They get dehydrated. The internal organs are affected. They then end up washing up on beaches and usually the, the outcome is very poor because you're talking about a huge animal trying to get that back in the water is extremely difficult uh, i think there was some a uh, couple of years ago in december that uh, washed up down on this um in east yorkshire i think 10 at the time washed up there and all passed away uh, and there was a sprinkling all around the north sea holland belgium that area so a group was coming and um, the outcome was poor. Hopefully some got away north uh, and managed to get, find their way back around by the um, deeper waters, because if they kept going south, uh, then it just gets shallower and shallower, the North Sea, and it's death trap for the sperm whales and um, other deep diving whales. Here you can see a sperm whale. Their diagnostic feature is just the, they have a very wrinkled skin, they have a small dorsal fin, they, their blow is, is to the front, as opposed to vertical. Other whales we get, we get other beak whales, which are deep diving whales, uh, which again, usually come to a sticky end if they get into the low North Sea, such as Cuvias and Sowerbees there. Very much a whale deep waters around the Azores or mid-Atlantic, that area. Uh, a little bit about where you can see cetaceans. So um, from land in Yorkshire, headlands are always a good place. Uh, so uh, Marine Drive at Scarborough, Filey Big, Flamborough Head, Bempton, or Whitby and Stays are all good places for um, looking for cetaceans. If you are looking for cetaceans, cetaceans, don't go and sit on a beach in Scarborough, South Bay with your ice cream because you're not likely to see any there, they're going to be further out. So uh, a headland is a good place. The Marine Drive Sky is particularly good because you can drive there, you can park, you can walk across the road, and the, certainly the poor place come in very close to, head, to the coastline there. Um, so that's a good place. So just about, if you go to the harbour, there's a fun fair at the top end of the harbour, north end, just walk another 300 metres along there and look out, and you have a good chance in calm weather of seeing porpoise or other cetaceans. Other marine animals which have been seen off, off Yorkshire, masking, basking sharks are a rare visitor. Uh, as it happens, when I first went out, first trip I ever went out from Yorkshire, whale watching in 2010, 
Uh, we saw whales, dead whales, and we also saw a basking shark. And that's the only basking shark I've ever seen in Yorkshire waters. They do occur occasionally. Uh, one uh, beach and had to be euthanized at, uh, in Filey Bay a couple of years ago. Occasional visitors, but we don't get many. It's not the right sort of environment for basking shark. There isn't enough food, I don't think, for them. They tend to come up the um, North Atlantic Drift up the west coast of Britain. Seals, grand common seals, loads of those around. If you go to Flamborough, you can look down at the seals and it's an excellent place to observe them. And if you've got any questions, if you would like to uh, put them on the question tab on during this talk, that's fine. And I'll do my best to answer them. <laughs>